afternoon, everybody. For all the attendees who are from Australia, and very good morning from all the for all the attendees who are outside from Australia. Welcome to all in this biggest event, Education and Migration Conclave 2022. In this session, Mr. Depain, he is a registered migration agent, going to present about cookery occupations, which may include courses and PR pathway. So before I start my presentation, I would like to announce our giveaway, which is very, really attractive. So please give us, uh, please give a shout out about the conclave session. The link is mentioned in the chat box by tagging Oz's group and Oz's group conclave, and they are excited free offers. Free two months PT coaching, free CCL coaching, free 485 coaching and consultation, and one PR consultation free. And on top of that, for all the students who are looking for education query, they will get up to 50% scholarship. So let's start our presentation. Give me a moment. I'll share my screen. So myself, Navneet Kaur, I'm qualified education agent working in Aussies Group Clayton. So today we are going to present preoccupation, which includes courses and PR pathway. So this in first uh, in the half part of session, I I'm going to represent about all the courses, all the cookery courses that are in different status, uh, different states, which includes uh, job opportunities, and what are the internet index index reports, which means like uh, in this session we, you are come to know how cookery would help you to get a PR pathway and what are job opportunities after you complete your cookery. And once I'll complete my presentation, then Mr. Depain, he's going to tell you about how we would, what things would help you to get a PR pathway in cookery, especially in cookery occupation like chef, cook, and furthermore. So let's get started. So do you know, being an international student, if you study one or two years of trade course in, in any of the education provider, and receive the same qualification as an Australian who undertakes about four years internship. So vocational trade courses may involve 360 hours of work based training. So it is after you complete your uh, either after you complete your trade course of one or two years or meanwhile after you, meanwhile you're completing your trade course, you can get 360 hours of work based training with an Australian employer, which will give you hand on experience. A trade course is essential and a trade business is one of the most growing industries in Australia. Trade skilled employees are highly in demand. And moreover, after doing a trade course, being a tradie, you will get a uh, good jobs and hence the job. There is a stunning job growth which may expected in the trade course in the coming five years and 10 years. So what is the benefit of doing cookery course? So once you'll complete the cookery course, everybody being an international student, you come here with the motive that, OK, you'll study here and then you want to go with the PR. So you want to be an Australian citizen, Australian resident. So cookery is one of the pathway that would help you to get a PR. So uh, benefits of studying cookery course. First one is PR pathway. Second one is that this course would help you to provide you a hand on practicals and training courses having a short duration, short duration and hence high earning opportunities. Provide you a work based training, affordable tuition fees. That is a concern of each and every international student who comes here with a good future prospects and hence they want affordable tuition fees. So some of the institutes do provide you a flexible payment plan, so you don't need to pay all the fees together. You may request your institute to give you some few uh, payment plans so you can pay them either monthly or twice in a month. So it depends upon your provider. Then moreover, uh, after doing a cookery course, you will get a long term career growth and hence they provide your job satisfaction. So cookery course, we are saying from the starting that we are going to talk about cookery courses. So what actually what courses, what certificates belongs to the cookery? So cookery courses include certificate three in cookery, which is of one year, certificate four in cook commercial cookery, which is of six months. In some institutes certificate, there is only a certificate four, not certificate three. So certificate four, they, they include some of the units of certificate three as well. 
So after doing certificate three and four, you will go to diploma of hospitality, which is of six months and advanced diploma of hospitality, which is of six months as well. So the duration may depends upon your college to college, institute to institute. So this is a general general entry requirement of basic. It's basically of all the trade course to enroll in any kind of a trade course, cookery, automotive, painting. This is a general entry requirement. So for to enroll in certificate three, you need to complete year 12 or any Australian equivalent qualification. And you need to have a minimum English level. So basically IELTS 5.5 or equivalent. And for certificate four, Generally, you required a prerequisite of certificate three completed year 12 or Australian qualification qualification equivalent minimum English level IELTS 5.5 or equivalent. And for diploma, it's quite same year 12 Australian equivalent qualification 5.5 or equivalent. And for advanced diploma, you must need to have a prerequisite of diploma. So you must have to complete a diploma to get enrolled in advanced diploma. And on top of that, you need to have a year 12 and IELTS 5.5 or Australian equivalent qualification. So if you're having Australian EQF certificate four or higher, so your entry requirements will be waived off. So yes, this is the most excited part of the uh, presentation that everybody is looking for scholarships. Yes, as I mentioned in the giveaway, so you can earn up to 50% of scholarships. Yes, some of the institutes do provide these scholarships and the scholarships are based on the promotional fees that institutes offer. So every month or after two or three months, the institute, every institute comes up with the different promotional offers and for us, they do offer the regional scholarships. So some of the institutes is having the regional campuses. So if the, any student is interested to go to a regional campus, so they do offer that do offer cookery course in different states. So there are there are a couple of institutes in South Australia. There is Durban, VIT, TAFE, SA, etc. In Western Australia, there are many. In Victoria, there are many. Queensland, NSW, NT, and Tasmania. So these are all the institutes that do offer cookery courses, cookery package. If you're interested to go with cookery package, if you're interested to go with only certificate three or four. So these are the colleges that do offer the cookery in different states. So yeah, let's explore courses that offer in different colleges and state wise. So here we go with the first state, Victoria. So this is a general viewpoint what actually Victoria is. People who are living in Australia, they might be aware about what is Victoria. But yeah, the people who are listening from outside of Australia, so this is for them. So Victoria is a small state of Australia mainland, but is the fastest growing city. It is the capital. Its capital is Melbourne that do offer colonial and contemporary architecture, beautiful botanical gardens, excellent restaurants and vibrant artistic community. So let's get started with the colleges that offer cookery in Victoria. So cookery packages in Victoria, there are I have this. I have mentioned few of the colleges in this presentation because there are a lot of colleges in Victoria, so it is hard for me to add all of them. Hence, it will take the presentation too long, so I'll be going to drop my name and my number, my email address in the chat box. So if you want further information about more colleges in Victoria, you may contact me or you may drop your quite. You can drop your questions in the chat box. I will definitely answer them. So first college in Victoria is Education Access Australia. Second is Glen Institute, Acumen, etc. So time duration of each course, like if you are on a TR, if you're on temporary res residence, so you don't need to go with all two year cookery program. You can do fast track your course or you may complete your cookery course in one year. And if you're an onshore student, onshore student visa holder, you have to complete your course in two years. Why one year, one by two year that Mr. Depain will explain you in his presentation. So uh, tuition fees is from $12,000 to $17,000. And as I mentioned earlier, they provide a work based training. So intakes is July, August, September, October. And some of the university colleges depend uh, intakes depend. Some, uh, some do have a monthly intake. Some do have four intakes in a year. So it depends upon college to college. So next is Western Australia. Western Australia is the largest state in Australia. 
The capital is Perth, which is situated on the Swan River and has all the modern conveniences. And while maintaining a friendly and relaxed feeling, White Sandy Beach is only a one minute from the city. So, cookery package, uh, the college, uh, colleges that do provide cookery in Western Australia is PCBT, Perth College of Business and Technology, Stanley College, Lead College, and many more. Duration is two years. If you are on a student visa, you have to complete your course in two years. And if you are on a TR, you can complete your course in one or one and a half year. You can fast track it. It depends upon your requirement. Tuition fees is of fifteen thousand to twenty thousand dollars. Work training base is provided and intakes is July, August, September, October. Depends upon institute. Some have monthly and some have yearly four or five intakes. Some institutes do offer package course, which means that you can enroll in two years of course, which includes certificate three, certificate four, diploma and advanced diploma, depending upon like whether you want to go with the package or whether you want to go with a single certificate, either three or four. Um, then following Western Australia, it's NSW, New South Wales. New South Wales was founded in 1788 and an Australian's oldest state. NSW is a popular state in Australia and majority of its inhabitants live along the coast. So they do have Peach Institute, AIBT, Lead College, VIT, etc. Duration is two years. T tuition fees may belong to $15,000 to $20,000. Work-based training is provided. Work-based training, they do provide you the training, like a practical skills, how you have to do the things, how do you have to all the skills that require as a chef or a cook, they provide you either on a campus or they will give, there are separate kitchens with the, there are separate kitchens where their practical skills happen. So they will, there are separate things. So while you enroll in this course, so they will teach you each and everything. So either they will teach you, they will, they are having their own kitchens or either they having a tie up with the big hotels or big Australian employers where you can get a work-based work -based training. So intake is July, August, September, October. As I mentioned earlier, intakes may vary. And next is Tasmania. Tasmania has a second smallest economy of Australian states and territory, which is significantly formed of tourism, agriculture, aquaculture, education, and healthcare. Tasmania is a significant agriculture exporter, as well as a significant destination for ecotourism. About 42% of its land area, including national parks and World Heritage Site, 21% is protected in the sum of some form of reserves. And the first environmental political party in the world was founded in this media. And they do have LTEC, TAFs, TAFs, NOVA International, VIT, etc. Duration onshore TR holder, 1.5 year. On your student visa holder, two years. Institution fees is $12,000 to $18,000. Work based training and picks are the same. So, okay, since from a couple of minutes we are talking about, yeah, these are the colleges that do offer cookery course, cookery course. So, after, so everybody is having this question after doing the cookery, what we will do, what we will become. So, these are the career opportunities or possible job outcomes which will be after doing your cookery program, you will be this. So these are from lower level to executive levels of job. So chef, nursing home chef, cruise liner chef, reception chef, restaurant chef, bristol chef, boarding school chef, dessert chef, hospital chef, hotel chef, motel chef, and catering company chef. So all together, like there's a, to sum up it. So after doing a cookery, you can either be a cook or you can get a skill assessment as a chef. So yeah, this is the interesting part. So after being a chef, how, what is the salary of a chef or a cook? The most common annual package is $60,000 to $110,000. $110, and weekly you may get $1,300 to $2,100. So yes, this is the current five-year industry project projection in a chef, in a chef stream. So yeah, every year Australian government do provide us a statistics that would help to understand what is industry project project projection of in this particular stream. So if we'll go with the industry projection in chef, 
This is the seventh largest industry in the Australia. Food industry is essential and fastest growing industry with endless opportunities. Employment level increases 19.5% and chef is highly demanded industry, which includes regional, non-regional area in Australia. So yeah, you can have a glimpse of this is the bar graph, which which is from 2010 to 2025. This you can come to know like the, the see these are ups and downs in the cook and chef of employment opportunities. So if we <coughs> sorry, so if we go with first of all, if we go with cook, so yeah, so see if we can see these are quite ups and downs from 2010. What the number of workers belongs to 3,200 to 40,000. And then in 2012, it goes slightly up, then it drops down, and then again up, then again drops down. So in 2025, it, it's under 32 to 40,000. So if, if it goes up and down, but the graph is same from 32,000 to 40,000. So yeah, there are quite, this industry is quite good industry, and you will get a good job opportunities in this industry. So if we go with chef, you can see, yeah. So in 2010, the graph is quite low and then it continuously growing. And in 2019, you can see it raises up to 100,000. And then after in coming five years, yes, it may go above 100,000. So yes, the, this other job opportunities in this field is quite high in different states. So. Underneath the bar graph, there are some of the states mentioned that do provide. Yeah, in NFW, you will get 32.8% of occupation in this field. In, two, in Victoria, is 26.8. In Queensland, it is 18.7. South Australia, 6.2. Western Australia, 10.5. Tasmania, 2%. And T, 1%. And ACT, 1.9%. So. Here we go with the next slide. So occupation projection till 2015-25, sorry. So yeah, uh, this is the occupation projection. This is the employment. If you can see on the above right in blue bar, yeah, there is an employment level in November 2020. And then there is a projected employment growth. OK, and yeah, you can see the numbers on the screen. Which is quite different. So in projected employment level in november 2025 it is from uh, for ca for cafe and restaurant manager it is 60 from 62 it is 82 percent and for chef it is 94 to 112 and for the cook is 38 too and it, it goes down to 1 person 37. so yes it is a quite demanding occupation and i believe after doing a cookery program you won't be regretting it and you will be getting a good op opportunities in next following slide. I'll explain you about the Internet vacancy report. What it is. Reports tell that Internet vacancy reports is every month Australian government and Australian. Yeah, Australian government do provide us this uh, report, which tells that what are the latest job latest job opportunities in this particular field. So if you can see the tailed occupation, so hospitality, retail and service managers, there are number of job advertisement is 7200 and if you go with automatic engineering and other trade workers it is 94 so it depends upon occupation is the giveaway as i mentioned in the starting of my slide you will get exciting offers so please give a shout out for a conclave session by tagging Aussies group and Aussies group conclave 2022 this is all from my end thank you so much for listening and now i pass the session to mr depain he will explain you about you have heard what are the cookery courses. Now he will let you know how you can get a PR in this particular field. So over to you, Dipen. I'll stop my presentation. Uh, thank, uh, you thank you very much, Nabi. You know, first of all, uh, uh, guys, uh, my name is Dipen, and I'm a registered migration agent at Aussies Group Brisbane office. So as we will be discussing about uh, uh, about the cookery options, so how to achieve the permanent residency, and also we'll be looking at the different sort of visa options uh, for the short term basis and for the long term basis. So let's start with the presentation. Uh, so as we, as Namit mentioned that we will be doing a giveaway. Uh, so details about the giveaways on your screen. So you can do this giveaway uh, by tagging yourself and your friends and 
and uh, you can also share this session with your friends. Uh, it will be helpful for them as well. So first of all, let's start with the occupations. What are the occupations available for the cook and the chef? So first of all, let's talk about the chef. So chef is a skill level two uh, occupation which plans and organize the preparation and cooking of food in a dining or a catering establishment. What are the specialization available and what are the skill level where you can work as a chef? So it includes chef the party, combi chef, demi chef, uh, sous chef and a second chef. Another occupation under this uh, cookery is a cook, which is skill level three. So slightly a lower level occupation than a chef who prepares season and cooks food in a dining and catering establishment. So basically a cook is a kind of an assistant of a chef. So let's see the industry projection of a particular chef occupation. Uh, so currently in Australia, there, uh, as per the Australian Bureau of Statistics, uh, 140,000 employees are working as a chef uh, and the future growth uh, is looking at a 13.9%. So it has a very good career opportunity if you ask uh, about the occupation wise and uh, the earning of a chef, which is a weekly earning is $1,250, which is almost like the average uh, wages of any employers working in Australia. Uh, the level of earning can be varied depending upon the skill level and experience, but this is an entry level a cook or chef can be working as an entry level job. They can earn this much money. Uh, talking about the what are the employment uh, opportunity across the different areas in Australia. So if you see the state wise, uh, New South Wales has the highest opportunity of uh, all occupation, it's uh, uh, compared to all any other state, uh, it covers of 32.8%, while Victoria and Queensland are on second and third position. Uh, these statistics are based on the employment, uh, uh, not for the migration point of view, but uh, it will help you to choose your state wisely in order to secure your job or experience uh, for the job and uh, for the future permanent residency pathway. Uh, so what are the industries where chef can be can work? So the main industry is accommodation and food services. So that includes the hotel and motel and cafe and dining restaurants. Uh, most of the people working as a cook and chef, they are uh, finding their job in those particular sectors. Apart from that, if you are uh, uh, at a skill level, like uh, not at the basic skill, but with uh, some sort of uh, experienced person can work in healthcare and social assistant, or if they can work in the manufacturing industry as well, or the 6.1% 6 6 applicant are working in any other industry, which include the cruise line uh, and, uh, and all sort of industries uh, where they require the chef services. Moving on to cook, uh, again, cook is the one of the most popular occupation among the uh, all the applicants who wants to apply for their permanent residency. I would say that cook and chef, both of them were the most popular occupation if you see the projection of last four to five years. Uh, so the current statistic of uh, cook is that currently 40,300 employed people are working in this industry and the future growth is 0.8%, which is slightly uh, low, I would say, but uh, considering the uh, the popularity of this course in amongst the students and the applicants, this uh, future growth can be increased more than 2% as well. Uh, and the weekly earning, as I mentioned, that uh, it's $1,188. That's an average earning, but depending upon the skills and uh, the level of your experience, that can be varied. Moving on to the next slide uh, about the employment across the different region. Again, New South Wales is to on top of the list, uh, considering the number of opportunities available. Uh, the main reason of uh, having more opportunity is that NSW is one of the most popular state across Australia and uh, you will be seeing a lot of cafes and uh, hotel and motel industry are there. And that was the main reason of uh, uh, they have their, they have the most uh, uh, highest percentage of job employment available in New South Wales. Now let's talk about the permanent residency pathway. This was just an overview about uh, what are the industry market in Australia for particular chef and cook. Now let's talk about the skill assessment. Now, first of all, uh, you need to understand that if you want to apply for the permanent residency in Australia, first and mandatory part is that you must have a positive skill assessment from the relevant authority. Now, what is skill assessment is exactly? So skill assessment is basically issued by the relevant authorities uh, assigned by the Department of Home Affairs who will conduct 
uh, and check your that you are meeting the level of uh, uh, the skilled employment in Australia and you have uh, meeting all the standards they have set to work in the relevant occupation. So for chef and cook, uh, uh, there are two main in the, there, there are two main authorities who will conduct the skill assessment. I'll be discussing about those authorities in the next slide. So for as I mentioned that uh, for cookery uh, occupations, uh, TRA, which is the main authority who conduct the skill assessment uh, for the chef and cook occupation. But apart from TRA, uh, VETAS is also another authority who is assigned by the TRA, which can conduct a skill assessment on behalf of TRA. Uh, there are two pathways you can apply for the skill assessment. First one is through a job ready program and second one is the based on your work experience or based on your previous qualification. Let's move on to the job ready program, which is the first assessment pathway. Uh, so job ready program is basically a one year of employment period and it's only available to the applicant who held a primary student visa for Australia. Now, uh, I'll give you the example. I have been contacted by recently from a few, few of the applicants who are on a dependent of uh, on the 485 visas and they have uh, they were dependent on the student visa and another 485 dependent and they did a cookery course and they were not able to do a job ready program. Uh, they were not aware about this important requirement that the job ready program is available only if you have held a primary student visa so primary student visa of Australia. So guys, like if you are not aware about this thing, make sure you check with your migration agent before enrolling the course and later on you do not want to regret like uh, investing the time and effort, but there will be an alternative pathway available to get the skill assessment, which I will be discussing uh, later on in this slide, but let's talk about the job ready program first. So job ready program is used to be the four step process, uh, including the provisional skill assessment. But from 1st of July 2022, the government has uh, made changes and uh, advised TRA as well to remove the requirement of having a provisional skill assessment in order to start the job ready program. Now, instead of that provisional skill assessment, uh, job ready like TRA has introduced another uh, uh, way to check the eligibility, eligibility of the applicant to do the job ready program which is uh, known as the job ready program registration and eligibility. Now you need to apply for this uh, job ready program registration and eligibility before you start your actual uh, job ready program. In this uh, uh, in this uh, application, they will be checking about your qualification and they will check your personal identification like your passport and uh, other documentations. And once they have convinced that, okay, once they are convinced that, okay, you are the applicant and you want to do the job ready program and meeting all the eligibility requirement, they will further advise you to start your job ready program by registering your employment. Now, in the second stage, you will be start uh, working with the employer for a full time basis for minimum one year of time. In the job ready program, there will be a second stage, which will, which is the job ready workplace assessment. Uh, now, in this assessment, after you complete a six month of work experience and also 863 hours, job ready uh, assessor will come to your workplace and conduct uh, an interview with you and with your employer. And they will be uh, asking a series of a question and they can also ask you to demonstrate and perform the task which you are performing in your restaurant. And based on that, they will conduct your assessment. Now, if you pass that assessment, you will be eligible to proceed further with the job ready final assessment. Now, the job ready final assessment is only eligible once you complete total 12 months of period since the uh, start of your job ready employment and also the 1725 hours. Now, we have been contacted by a few of the applicants recently and they said like, what if I work more than uh, 40 hours a week and can complete those number of hours less than 12 months of period. So it is a mandatory that you have to meet both of the requirements, number of hours as well as the total duration. It should be minimum one year of time as well since you started your job ready program. Now uh, again, like uh, changing the employment is possible during your job ready program. Uh, you can say, uh, change maximum five employees, five employers, my bad, but uh, we recommend you that uh, you know uh, if you change the lease employment, that would be great for your application. However, the minimum requirement working with one employer is six months and 863 hours. So even if we have a five different employer, you can work for to four different employer for any time, but for one employer, you have to work minimum six months and complete 863 hours. 
and upon the uh, final assessment, you will be getting a positive skill assessment, which will be eligible, which will makes you eligible for applying for the further visas in Australia. Now let's talk about the second step, uh, second way how to get a skill assessment. If you have forget to do a job ready program, or if you do not have a time to do a job ready program, so what will be the other option? Now second option is based on a previous qualification and work experience. Now, if you have an Australian qualification. Uh, you can get your assessment done with a you, with the three years of experience. Let's say you got a qualification from Australia certificate for in cookery. If you haven't done your job ready program, you can work three years full time or equivalent part time in your employment. And after that, completing that three years of work experience requirement, you are eligible to get a skill assessment. Now, if you do not have, let's say if you do not have an experience or if you do not have an Australian qualification, but you got an experience from overseas. Now, in that case, you can uh, get the RPL certificate from Australian based institute. So RPL is basically a recognizer of prior learning and it's available for those candidates who does not have a, a formal qualification related to uh, their field of working. So if you have an experience, you can get your qualification assessed by the uh, like the eligible RTO and they can issue the qualification and based on that qualification, you can get the three years of experience and get your skill assessment done uh, and which is also useful to get a uh, exp uh, which is also useful to get a skill assessment done and helpful for getting a points as well. Now let's talk about the vet assess, which is also another authority who will be conducting a skill assessment on behalf of the Department of Home Affairs and TRA. Uh, so there are two types of pathways uh, from vet assess, pathway one and pathway two. So pathway one is basically available for applicant who does not have an Australian qualification. It's similar like an RPL qualification, but uh, you've got a qualification from overseas with a work experience. So let's say if you got a, any sort of cookery related qualification from overseas, but if you have a three to five years of full time work experience within last 10 years of time frame, including one year of full time experience within last three years of time frame, you are eligible to apply skill assessment through pathway one. Now, uh, some of the non-licensed trade occupations require five years of work experience if they do not have a RPL qualification or no other qualification. Uh, uh, so, uh, for like like a, a cookery occupation is comes under non-licensed trade occupation, so they do not require that long experience. Uh, even if they have a, a three years of employment with formal training, it is fine. But if they don't have a uh, experience still it is uh, acceptable by vet assess to get the skill assessment done. Now talking about the second stage as I mentioned that if you have done uh, this is especially for those applicant who has uh, who was on a 485 visa dependent visa or a student dependent visa and completed the study but they were not able to do a job ready program. So for those people uh, they can complete that three years of full time work experience in Australia uh, and they are eligible to get a skill assessment based on their qualification as well as the work experience in Australia. But you should be aware that that, that three years of experience uh, must be within last 10 years of time frame and at least 12 months of experience full time within last three years of time frame. Now, what are the path like the assessment stages in wet assess? So stage one will be the evidence review. So assessor will assess your evidences you provided. So that includes your experience, your qualification documentations, your uh, personal identification documentations, and all those documentation will be checked by the assessor. And once they are satisfied that and they are meeting the requirement, they will issue the technical interview uh, invitation to the candidate. Now, in the technical interview, uh, assessor will uh, conduct a series of questions just like a job ready uh, workplace assessment, and they will ask you to perform the task and uh, related to your occupation. So let's say for a chef, they ask you to uh, uh, prepare a dish from the menu, whatever the restaurant you're working on. So if you perform it uh, as per the, uh, you know, like a properly, you will be eligible to pass the interview. And most of the time the assessment are held in English, so no interpreter is allowed. So there is no other way to get a, a, a uh, you read, read of this requirement. I mean, you have to be uh, conduct the assessment in English only. So if you are not confident enough, uh, you should work on your English first and also before appearing for the uh, skill assessment for the second stage. Uh, now let's talk about the future pathway. So as I mentioned that if you complete the cookery courses in Australia, 
how can you extend your stay by uh, getting a short term pathways and for the long term pathways? So for short term pathways, a temporary graduate visa, which is uh, also known as TR, is available. And for the permanent residency pathway, we have a general skill migration visa and the employer sponsored visa is available. We'll be discussing about uh, each individual visa uh, one by one. So let's talk about the 485 visa, which is a commonly known as a TR, temporary resident. Now, good thing is that it used to be the visa grant period of 18 months, but uh, since last year, government has changed the policy. And now uh, a student who has completed trade qualification in Australia are eligible to get two years of visa, which is almost equivalent to a bachelor's degree holder. So it's a plus point for the student. Uh, to apply for this visa, you have to meet the minimum eligibility criteria which is the course you have studied. It has to be minimum at certificate three level or above. And the duration of that course must be minimum 92 weeks. So you can combine one or two courses or more than two courses as well. But the duration of total uh, the study period would be the registered course would be the 92 weeks. Apart from that, you must have to complete the study in 16 months of time frame. Uh, so that will be counted during from the completion date, completion later on your uh, qualification. Additional requirement is an English requirement. You require overall six band with minimum five band each. Now, good thing as I mentioned earlier that uh, provisional skill assessment used to be required before if you have lodged your application before 1st of July. But uh, from 1st of July onwards till 30th of June 2023, you will not be required a provisional skill assessment to lodge a 485 visa. So this is a temporary changes available at the moment until 30th of June, which can be further extended depending upon the situation. So you have to be very careful with this requirement as well. Now let's talk about the uh, permanent residency pathway. How can you achieve permanent residency through your 485 visas? Now, options will be available under general skilled migration is the class 189, 190 and 491. Now, if you see here, 491 has a two different category, family sponsor stream and the state nomination scheme as well. 189 is a skilled independent visa, while 190 is also a skilled nominated visa, but endorsed by the state government. Now let's talk about the basic requirement to apply for the general skilled migration visas. To apply for general skilled migration visa, the applicant must have a positive full skill assessment in their nominated occupation. So as we discussed the first thing in our slide that uh, what is a skill assessment, why it is required. So this is the reason why we discuss before we go ahead to the available options to, uh, to achieve the permanent residency that skill assessment is a mandatory part if you do not have a skill assessment, you cannot uh, apply for the permanent residency through general skilled migration pathway. So while you are on 485 visa, while you are having a visas to allow work full time, make sure you use those visa wisely. Achieve the minimum work experience required to get your skill assessment done. And also uh, another requirement is the 65 points. Now that 65 point is the minimum requirement set by the Department of Home Affairs. If you want to apply for this visa, you must have this number in your AOI metric, AOI system. But the simple rule is that if you want to in, uh, increase your chances of getting invitation from the state government or from the Department of Affairs, you should increase your points and increase your chances as well. Now, English requirement is six band each. You can appear for the IELTS or any equivalent examination. You can also appear for PT, TOEFL or CA exam. It is acceptable by the department. And age limit applies when uh, you are applying for any permanent residency of uh, permanent residency visa in Australia, which is a 45 years of age. There are some exemptions available, but we will not be discussing about uh, exemption at this stage because that will be a separate topic. Uh, now, how can you calculate your points for the gender skilled migration? So main factors to calculate points, which includes your age, level of study, have you met the Australian study requirement? If you have done study in regional Australia, level of English, marital status, a single and married person, they can also get uh, points depending upon their marital status, number of uh, work, a number of years of work experience overseas and Australian, and also NATI and CCL. So you can see the uh, slide and all the criteria. How can you calculate your points? Uh, I can provide this uh, points calculator. Uh, it's also available on the website of Aussies Group as well. So you can calculate your points on your own as well. 
But if you require any, uh, if you are not confident or if you are not sure to how many points you have, you can always contact me and I can uh, get it back to you as soon as possible. Now let's talk about uh, skilled visas. So 189 subclass, which is a skilled independent visas, a direct permanent residency pathway. This visa is point based system. So simple rule is that if you have a highest ranking, if you have a high points, your chances will be higher. Now. For applying this visa, your occupation must be in the long term list. So department has a three different sort list, long term list, short term list and the regional occupation list. Now from chef and cook occupation, chef is available in the long term list. It means you can apply for the 189 visa as well. But if you are if your occupation is a cook, you cannot apply 189 visa for them. There is an alternative pathway is available. But if you ask uh, that, uh, for subclass 189 visa, it is one of the most competitive way to get PR because anyone from anywhere in the world, once they meet the minimum criteria uh, set by the Department of Home Affairs, they are eligible to apply for their expression of interest and depending upon their points, they can also achieve the invitation to apply for the visa as well. Now, invitation round, uh, it's uh, done by the Department of Home Affairs on a quarterly basis. So uh, again, like it's going to be uh, a uh, little bit uh, uh, difficult in this time of frame, but uh, as we have seen in recent uh, announcement that government has increased the quota for subclass 189, uh, which uh, which will be a beneficial for all the applicants in future, and there will be a more invitation we will be seeing in the invitation round from the Department of Home Affairs. Now, what is subclass 190? So was subclass 190 is basically a skill nominated visa endorsed by the state and territory government. Again, it's a direct permanent residency pathway. Uh, considering the current system, which is one of the most appropriate way to get your permanent residency. Now, to apply for this visa, every state and territory has set their own criteria. So uh, state-wise criteria we'll be discussing in next slides, uh, but this is the most important part that you need to understand. What is the minimum requirement if you want to apply for this visa is that you must have minimum 65 points skill assessment as well as you meet the state nomination criteria. Now the good thing is that uh, you will receive an extra five points from the state government if you're applying for this visa. So let's say if you have 70 points on your own and you are the government requirement, the state government requirement is 75 points. So in that case, that five points you will be getting from the state government if you are applying for the subclass 190. Now, there is another way to get a permanent residency through a state nomination through subclass 491 visa, which is known as the skilled regional provisional visa. Now, uh, a lot of people are hesitating of getting this visa and we have been contacted by a lot of people and we have been told that, OK, we want to get 491 visa. We do, sorry, we do not want to get a 491 visa. We want to go for 189 visa or 190 visa. Now, I always advise those uh, applicant is that uh, do not think that 491 visa cannot lead you toward permanent residency. It always leads you toward permanent residency. And also it is one of the best way as of now to get the permanent residency. I mean, a lot of people believe that if what if the rules are will change in future. So rules will be changing, but affecting only the new applicant, not to the existing applicant. So if you are hesitating of getting subclass 491, do not hesitate. Just go for it. It's one of the best way to achieve the permanent residency uh, and very easy options are available. Like maybe you require more experience, more points or more uh, job uh, in uh, in for subclass 189 and 190, but most of the state are offering a state nomination with the minimum work experience in subclass 491. Now, what is subclass 491 and what are the conditions? So once you get your 491 visa, you will be getting five years of visa with Medicare eligibility. It will be same like any permanent residency visa. Now, good thing is that if you are struggling with the points, it's a good uh, options to apply for permanent residency. You will receive additional 15 points from the state government. Also, the condition is that if you get this visa, you have to leave, work, and study in a regional area for three years from the date of your visa grant. And additionally, you have to earn $53,900 income per year. It will It is a taxable income. So further criteria for applying subclass 191 and for the more qualification will be available very soon from the Department of Home Affairs because we are expecting that uh, most probably in month of September or August, they will make clear uh, uh, the policy on this particular visas. Subclass 191 visa will commencing from November 2022 onwards. So wait for the further information from the Department of Home Affairs. 
Now, <clears throat> what is the another stream where you can apply for an N1 visa? Now, this is only available for the occupation which is in long term list. So cook uh, cannot apply for this 491 visa through family stream. Chef can apply this visa. Again, same like uh, 189, 190 visa. It's a point based visas, uh, but you receive 15 extra point if you have been sponsored by the eligible relative. Now, eligible relative must be living in the designated area at the time of invitation. So there is no particular time and how long your uh, your uh, sponsor must be living in regional area. So let's say if they have recently started living for two months or three months, that is also acceptable if you are invited uh, from this Department of Home Affairs for this born and family stream visa. So I encourage all the applicants who are work who are, whose occupation is in long term list. You should apply for the 491 family stream if you have a really uh, eligible relative uh, living in Australia, regional Australia. Now let's discuss about the state by state wise. What are the uh, what are the states is good for applying permanent residency? Uh, so if you can see here, I have made the list of a uh, 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 state which has one of the most uh, common and most uh, uh, popular uh, state to apply for the permanent residency through cook and chef occupation. So let's talk about the Queensland first. So Queensland is offering state sponsorship through two subclasses 190 and 491. Now for subclass 190, they have said the minimum points requirement is 80 points. So we haven't seen any 190 invitation issued in last financial year with less than 80 points for particularly chef and cook occupation. But if you see for subclass 491, this requirement is only 65 point. And we have received few invitations as well under subclass 491 with 65 points uh, with the least point. This is the least point and we have received that as well. So it's not mandatory to have 80 points all the time, but even if you have only 65 points, you are still eligible to uh, achieve the nomination from the state government. Now, what is the basic requirement to apply for a visa in Queensland? Uh, <clears throat> if you are referring to the subclass 190, you must have a minimum six month of full time work experience that can be anywhere in entire Queensland. But if you are referring to the subclass 491, you must require three months of full time work experience from regional Queensland. So regional Queensland uh, is uh, like entire Queensland is regional except the Brisbane City Council areas. And there are some suburbs uh, near to Brisbane City, which is hardly 10 or 15 minutes away from the city, which is also comes in a regional area. So they have department has recently announced this new suburbs in month of March 2022. And we already receive invitation for the client who are working in those new suburbs, which was recently announced. So it's again a good opportunity if you do not want to live in a remote regional areas, you want to stay uh, close to the city and wants to apply for subclass 491, this should be a good opportunity for the applicants. Uh, apart from that, uh, under subclass 190 and 491, the common requirement is that you must have a minimum 12 months of job offer letter from the employer you're working for. Uh, again, seven band in English is mandatory uh, for subclass 190 and 491. However, we have seen invitation without having a seven band each, especially in the trade occupation. So, for example, if you don't have a six, seven band each, still you can apply for the expression of interest and you can also uh, expect the invitation from the state government as well. It was initially announced by the Queen's. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> was initially announced by the state government that seven band is mandatory, but later on uh, we have seen the invitation, which means that even if you don't have, that's perfectly fine. And this is especially for the trade occupation, not for any other occupation. Uh, <coughs> apart from that, the alternative pathway is available in Queensland. Like if you have a financially strong background and if you are happy to invest uh, some amount and getting permanent residency through the business visas, Queensland has this uh, category known as a small business owner, and that will get your phone and visa through uh, investing $100,000 amount in a regional businesses. So for example, if you are looking to purchase a business in a regional area, that business must be minimum two years old and must be operating for at least last two years. Now the minimum amount you should invest to buy this business is $100,000. It used to be the 100,000 including the renovation and other costs involved previously, but uh, since last year they have made clearly that the minimum amount you invest at the time of purchasing the business should be $100,000. Now partnership is not allowed. No joint venture is allowed for this uh, SBO category. 
apart from that, the important requirement is you must be a uh, uh, trade D business for minimum six months. So let's say if you purchase a business in month of January, you will be eligible to apply for the nomination in month of June, at least six months before applying for the nomination. Another condition is that you must hire at least one citizen, Australian citizen or permanent residence or eligible New Zealand citizen in your in your business for at least 20 hours of it. You can combine more than one employer as well. Let's say you get two employers working there, 10 hours each. That is also acceptable. Now, a lot of people have asked what sort of businesses are eligible for this SBO category. So Queensland website has all the details about uh, what are the businesses are eligible and what are not. But uh, here I'll discuss about some base like uh, common businesses where we get uh, inquiries. Home based businesses, square businesses, or taxi businesses, and the sub lease of franchises are not acceptable. Again, uh, if you are an entrepreneur and wants to do a startup businesses, now good thing, good news is that it is acceptable, but you need to wait for at least two years before you apply for the expression of interest. So you have to trade your business for two years with minimum $200,000 $200, turnover yearly before you apply for the expression of interest. Now let's move on to the next state, which is a New South Wales. Now New South Wales has a two different stream available, subclass 190 and 491. Under subclass 190, uh, the most important part is that your occupation must be available in the New South Wales skilled occupation list. Now currently New South Wales skilled occupation list is not published yet while we were making the slides, so there was availability, but right now it's not published yet. So we are waiting for the <coughs> further information from the state government about the skilled occupation list, but the common criteria which we have seen from New South Wales since last few years that if you want to apply and if you want to achieve the residency and you want to increase your chances of getting invitation, you must require a high points in your nominated occupation. So it's similar to subclass 189. Higher chances will be if you have a higher points and additionally you require to prove that you have been living in you are living in New South Wales for at least three months if you do not have a job, but if you have a job in your nominated occupation, that three months of residency requirement is uh, uh, not mandatory, even if you can apply within one month of residence in New South Wales. But if you have a job in your nominated occupation, plus you have a high points. Now, let's say if you do not have a high points or you're not working or having a job in New South Wales, so what are the options available? So under subclass 491, there are three different streams is available. So let's say, for, let's discuss about the different streams. So stream one is available for the applicant who is living and working in their nominated occupation for minimum 12 months in original Australia. Uh, sorry, regional New South Wales. Uh, the minimum requirement is 12 months. However, uh, we have been notified by the local authorities, local regions that even if the applicant is not working for 12 months, uh, but still they are eligible if they have a minimum three months of employment. Now this employment can be part time or a full time. So which is a good thing that after working at least three months, you are eligible to apply for the stream one. Uh, now stream two is available only for the graduates who has completed their two years of study in New South Wales based institute, regional institute. Uh, you need to understand, you need to be aware that the uh, study you have completed from New South Wales based institute that study has to be relevant to your nominated occupation. So let's say uh, if you have nominated occupation is a cook or a chef, but you have completed your two years of study in business field, which is not acceptable by the state government. So the nominated occupation and study occupation study, what you have completed has some relevancy. Uh, the third stream is available uh, for all the applicants uh, across the world, including people who are interested and who are offshore as well. Now again, a priority will be given to the stream one and two applicants. Stream three applicants will be given the least priority. However, we have received few invitations under stream three for offshore candidates as well, if they have a very good profile. <coughs> uh, so if you have a, you know, like uh, if you're living interstate, but if you have an experience with the good points, you can also apply for the stream three and there is a chances of getting invitation. Now let's talk about the South Australia. The South Australia has a main two categories if you are a graduate and if you are working. So graduate category requirement is that you must be studied for at least two years in South Australia and sorry, one year of study in South Australia. And on top of that, you required minimum three to 18 months of work experience depending upon your occupation. Now for the interstate applicant, 
you are still eligible to apply for the 491 visa or 190 visa depending upon the number of uh, work experience you have in South Australia. Now that experience can be full time or part time. Now uh, currently the program is closed and we are expecting the program will be open. So now uh, there was a question uh, from uh, 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 from Rex. I guess that he asked me that uh, what is the requirement to achieve 190. So the requirement is I mentioned that if you are a graduate from Western South Australia, after finishing your study, if you're working for minimum 12 to 18 months outside of regional, uh, outside of a greater Adelaide, you will be considered to get 190 visa. You will be uh, considered uh, for 190 visa, but if you are working in greater Adelaide area, then that work experience requirement will be higher, which is 18 to 24 months. However, like uh, that can be uh, varies based on the uh, number of applications South Australia is receiving and based on your profile as well. If you have a good experience, you can always be considered for 190. But uh, if you want to achieve for, uh, if you're aiming for 190, uh, my suggestion would be targeting, find a job outside of regionally, outside of Greater Adelaide and work there for minimum 12 months to 18 months, which will be, uh, a good uh, alternative to get 190 if you are not a graduate from South Australia. Moving on to the next state, which is the Western Australia. Now, Western Australia was very high in demand in recent time when they opened up their program for everyone. So they have main uh, two different streams available, graduate stream and the general stream. So if you want to apply through a graduate stream, you must be a graduate from Perth based or Western Australia based institute for minimum two years of study required in Western Australia. Uh, after finishing your study with positive skill assessment, you require to show the evidence that you have been working in your nominated or closely related occupation for at least six months, or you have received the contract employment contract from Western Australia based employer for additional six months. So either either of them is a requirement. Uh, so you can work for six months and then you can apply for the nomination. But if you are struggling to find, uh, if you are not found a job as of now, you can look for the job. And even if you started working uh, for at least one month, you can still uh, eligible to apply for a graduate stream pathway by providing that evidence that you have studied in Western Australia and you receive a job offer letter from Western Australia based uh, uh, employer. Now general stream is available for interested candidate as well as for the graduates of uh, Western Australia as well. The requirement is that you must be having 12 months of full time job offer letter if you are invited or sorry, not all, but uh, uh, apart from that, the additional requirement is that uh, you have a minimum one year of Australian work experience or three years of overseas work experience. So let me talk about, let's say, for example, a computer network and system engineer, there was a requirement of having one year of Australian experience. So if you do not have those experience, you are not eligible to apply for the Western Australia state nomination under general stream. Second thing is that whatever the experience required, it must be claimable. It If you are not working at a skill level, but if you have an experience, so let's say, for example, if you're working as a, a assistant cook or some at a kitchen hand, you have a work experience, but that is not a, at a skill level. So you will not be considered to meet the requirement of that one year of experience. Now, what is the selection criteria? So selection criteria is based on your study. Uh, points and the date of submission of your expression of interest and your location. So if you are residing in Western Australia, you will be given priority. Second priority will be given to the applicant who are in Australia, but living in the state. And the third priority will be given to the candidates who are outside of Australia. And uh, they can also receive invitation if they have a very good profile with the highest point. Now let's move on to Tasmania. Uh, Tasmania also have uh, two categories. Uh, to be eligible for a cook and chef, there is uh, two uh, categories available, graduate stream and working stream. So if you want to apply for 190 visa subclass, you must have completed two years of study in Tasmania based Institute. While studying, you have to show that you have lived in, uh, lived in Tasmania as well. Now for subclass 491, all you require is just complete one year of study, Tasmania based Institute and leave as well. Now, if you, has, uh, if you guys have uh, came across that uh, cookery and hospitality occupation was Tasmania as a priority list. So if you are working there in Tasmania or if you are studying in hospitality in Tasmania, you have a very good of chances of getting invitation with 60, 65 points only. You don't require high points like New South Wales or uh, any other state. So 
basically you just meet the minimum requirement with minimum points you are eligible to apply for the subclass 190491 now if you do not have a, a study in tasmania you can start working for minimum six months full time in your occupation and you can be considered for 190 and also if you do not have a six month of experience uh, but even if you have a three months of experience you are eligible to apply for at least subclass 491 we have received few invitation as well from 491 visa by working minimum three months uh, that doesn't require six months of experience in any occupation even if you have three months of experience in any occupation it is also fine but try to find a job in your nominated occupation that will increase your chances that will strong make strong your profile which is a good thing now let's move on to the last state which is a canberra now canberra i would say will be a least uh, preferred state across the uh, applicant because uh, the criteria is quite uh, 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 difficult to achieve at the moment because uh, most of the occupations available in canberra are for it engineers and basically it's a government uh, uh, the capital territory of Australia. So there are not many occupations available for cook and chef. But if you are living and working in uh, Canberra in your nominated occupation, you can be eligible to apply for subclass 190491, depending upon if your occupation is available or not. Please note that they have uh, their own Canberra metric system, which is uh, also uh, you need to aware that you must have a score in the Canberra metric system, not the Department of Home Affairs the ranking system. Uh, Canberra would be the least. Uh, if you are a chef or cook, uh, I would suggest you to look for either Queensland, New South Wales or South Australia. That would be the good options to apply for a skilled migration visa. Now let's move on to the applicant who got an experience. Uh, for those candidates who got minimum two years of experience, they are eligible to apply through the employer sponsored visas. Now everyone doesn't have an Australian study or if they are unable to achieve high points or they are unable to achieve an English score uh, to increase their points. So what are the options they have? So employer sponsored visa is a really, really good option for them. Uh, to be eligible for this visa, uh, you must have an eligible sponsor who is actively uh, operating their business in Australia and they must meet the minimum uh, criteria to apply for the sponsorship. So that includes their financial capability, genuine position in the business, and there are some other things as well. But to apply for this visa, the applicant must meet the minimum criteria. Uh, let's talk about what are the visa options available through employer sponsored visas. Now here you can see the comparison between different visa options available. Subclass 482, which is also known as temporary skill shortage visas. Subclass 186, employer nomination scheme and subclass 494, which is a skilled employer regional uh, visas. Now. Uh, to apply for this visa, minimum two years of work experience required. So let's say if you are having only two years of work experience, you can explore the options for subclass 482. Now, skill assessment is not mandatory if you have an Australian qualification, but if you do not have an Australian qualification, an assessment is a mandatory for chef and cook. It is not mandatory, but uh, from overseas candidate, yes, it's mandatory for you. The pathway towards permanent residency after getting 482 visas. You can work for uh, three years with the same employer. You can apply for 186 visa through TIT stream or the general skill migration visas. Again, chef, they can apply 186 visa through TIT stream, but if you are a cook, you have to look for the general skill migration visa option. Now, especially for the chef, uh, 186 visa direct entry is available. If you have a three years of work experience, Along with the skill assessment, you are eligible to apply for one in six visa. It is a direct permanent residency. Uh, the last option would be a 494 visa, which is uh, available for cook and chef both. If you have a three years of work experience and a skill assessment with the eligible employer operating the business in a regional area, you are eligible to apply for subclass 494. Now, uh, for 482 visa and 186 visa, your employer location can be anywhere. It can be in regional area or it can be in a city area or across Australia anywhere. But when it comes to the 494 visa, your employing location must be in a regional area. So this was all the options available from the permanent residency, from temporary visas to a permanent residency. And if you guys have any question, you can ask me uh, uh, through the chat box and be happy to answer all the questions. 
OK, a guy call. Uh, there is a question for uh, what about Victoria? So Victoria are basically focusing on the STEM qualification at the moment, and we have not seen many invitation uh, uh, for the applicant who is working in Victoria. However, if you are working in a critical sector, for example, if you are working as a cook or a chef, but you're working in a let's say in a hosp uh, hospital or a you know, in a critical industry, you uh, your expression of interest and your ROI can be considered uh, for meeting the minimum requirement. But that is a uh, it depends upon case by cases and the invitation we have seen that was mostly for subclass 491, not for 190 visa. So for that, you have to be working in a regional area of uh, Victoria. But if you ask me what is the good state to apply uh, out of all the states, I'll give the priority to South Australia, Queensland, New South Wales and Western Australia. These four states are very good if uh, if you want to uh, looking for an option through the state nomination pathway. And if you have work experience, obviously the employer sponsored visa is one of the best pathway. It's been one of the most popular visa options across all the applicants to apply for permanent residency. Now uh, there are some more questions. Uh, let's take uh so Maurice, you are... one question he's saying in victoria opening is victoria's opening for offshore applicants uh see as of now there is no information available for offshore candidate but uh, requirement will be available very soon and uh, as now border restrictions are open most of the state are offering state sponsorship uh, for the offshore candidate we have seen new south wales south australia and canberra they already started inviting people from offshore as well. So in next financial year, which is uh, like in this financial year, we can expect more state to open the program for offshore candidates too. And one more question from Madiha, which state better, Western Australia or South Australia? OK, so both of the state are very good at the moment. Uh, if you see the quota for Western Australia, they are already asking for the high number of quota, which is most probably we are expecting that will be approved. But uh, Western Australia is a very good option, I would say, because if you have done study, you just require skill assessment and minimum work experience, which is a six month. But if you want to uh, secure 190 visa through South Australia, if you have a very good work experience, if you are happy to work outside of uh, Greater Adelaide, then yes, you, it will be a good option. But if you are applying from interstate, uh, if you are not a graduate of Western Australia or a South Australia, then South Australia would be a better option. Another question from Kamal. Tasmania is not recommended for commercial degree. He's, she's asking. Is it recommended uh, for commercial? No, yes, it is definitely recommended because if you see that, if you see that uh, the priority occupation list from Tasmania in last financial year, cookery and hospitality occupations were available. And a lot of students went there to study cookery and while study they were doing a job as well, which was a beneficial. So definitely it's a recommended course in Tasmania if you are willing to move to Tasmania. Mr. Deep is asking, I'm Canada permanent resident and I want to move to Australia. What are the options? OK, so uh, for the overseas candidate, uh, as, you as I mentioned that uh, if you want to apply through the general skid migration pathway, you need to achieve the point score as per the department's point. And also you need to achieve the skill assessment. Now he hasn't clear that uh, what sort of skill assessment he has, what sort of experience he has and what sort of study he has. But if he is in a cookery. He has mentioned that he's having experience of three years at Pizza Hut. OK, so. Uh, if you're working in a. Uh, generally. It's a fast food or takeaway restaurant. So as per Australian rule, like if you're working in fast food at takeaway restaurant, you will not be considered as a cook or chef. But if it is a, a gourmet restaurant, let's say for the gourmet pizzas restaurant, if you have an experience in that particular field or a fine dine restaurant, then only it will be considered. So I can suggest you to, uh, you know, get more experience, uh, not a pizza hut, but as a uh, pizza chef, but in a gourmet restaurant or fine dining restaurant that will help him. OK, there's another question. Which state is best for offshore? Offshore again, uh, New South Wales and South Australia is a very good option, but uh, we are waiting for uh, further uh, uh, information from the different state which will be opening very soon and they will publish their criteria as well. 
Uh, so my suggestion would be wait for further updates. For at least next couple of weeks, it will be available. One more question. Uh, how about Victoria workforce pathway to shift? Uh, so again, like it's a good option uh, and we will be seeing uh, more uh, opportunities for the chef through the workforce pathway. Uh, definitely it, will, it is going to be a good option if you are working in Victoria in future. Okay, one more question. What is the criteria of an employer to sponsor on 186? OK, so the criteria for employer to be sponsored that they must be operating the business in Australia. And what important part is when department makes the assessment for the employer, they look at the company's financial. If the company is in profit or loss, if the company is in profit, there is a very high chances of getting approval of the nomination. And apart from that, the company needs to prove the genuine position in the business. So. If the company proves all these three things, there will be a good chances of getting visa approval and the nomination approval as well. Same person is asking if I have only three plus years of experience but no studies, can I apply for 186? Uh, for 186 visa, uh, again, the skill works in a different way. You must require a relevant qualification along with uh, three years of work experience. But if you do not have a relevant qualification, uh, you require more experience, I would say around seven to eight years of work experience, and you can get the RPL qualification based on your work experience, which will substitute the requirement of having minimum qualification. So let's say if you have seven or eight years of work experience, so you can get your RPL qualification, which will deduct three years of experience till you will be left for three years of experience. So that will make you eligible for applying 186 visa. Okay. Uh, which state is better for Cook having three years of Australian experience? Uh, Cook, definitely. Uh, if you have a three years of work experience, you can look for South Australia, Western Australia and New South Wales. Okay, and there's one more question. We have a friend who owns a restaurant in Tasmania mm -hmm. and eligible sponsor. Student is 42 years old. Experience counts after skill assessment or during. Okay, this so... During the study, yeah. OK, so the experience generally, uh, if you are looking for a 482 visa, uh, that experience can be post or pre qualification is uh, OK. But if you do not have a, you know, like if you're looking for the 186 visa or for 494 visa, experience must be after the qualification. So the time you spent after the qualification to gain the experience, that is only countable. But again, like if you are, uh, as I mentioned that, uh, you know, with uh, 42 years of age, he should be looking for either subclass 494 or subclass 491 visa or 186 visa, which can you know give them permanent residency directly because once she turns 45 years of age, he or she will not be having many options apart from subclass 482. Okay, uh, one more question. I'm in Australia on tourist visa. If I want to apply for 190 or 491, the application have to be done as onshore or offshore. Uh, that will be considered onshore applicant because your current location is in Australia. However, uh, you need to understand uh, that the requirement of applying for the state nomination because if you see the most of the state requires you to work uh, in the state before you apply for the nomination and work visitor visa generally doesn't have a working rights. So choose the state where you can where, where there is a no work experience requirement, let's say for NSW Stream 3, where even if you are not working, if you are on a visitor visa, still you are eligible to apply for the 491 visa or 190 visa. Okay, where they go for graduates, uh, yeah, where they go for graduate stream, Western Australia or South Australia? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Its question is like it is unclear, but it's saying Western Australia or South Australia is we go for graduate stream. Uh, see, as I already mentioned, for the graduate stream, South Australia and Western Australia are both very good option uh, for the graduate because they both offer permanent residency pathway. While graduate of Western Australia require less experience, but uh, from South Australia, you require a, a little bit higher experience than the Western Australian graduates. Okay, another question. I live in Victoria. I finish my job ready and I have one year of experience. Can I apply for 190 for Western Australia or South Australia? Uh, Western Australia, uh, yes, you are eligible through the interstate candidate uh, application, which is available. But if you want to apply for South Australia, you must be living and working in South Australia 
and you have to work minimum 12 to 18 months uh, for subclass 190 in South Australia. Another question. I have completed my studies commercial cookery in last year in August. I have not started my job ready program. I am in Adelaide, South Australia. I have applied 485 in August last year. Is there any problem? May I know in detail about job ready? OK, so. There will be no problem, as you mentioned that uh, uh, has she mentioned that she already got her 485 visa or she is still on a bridging visa? Uh, she has just mentioned that I have applied for 485 in August last year. OK, so I'm assuming that considering the current uh, processing time, she hasn't got her 485 visa yet. So definitely uh, I would suggest you to start your job ready program as soon as possible. There will be no issue even if you apply for your job ready program now. But make sure uh, do not delay. Start your job ready program as soon as possible, either in South Australia or anywhere, wherever you find a job that will make you eligible to apply for the pro full skill assessment and for the permanent residency later on through the state nomination pathway. Which state is best option to study Kukri and try want to try for 491? OK, so all the state are offering, uh, 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 you know, pathways for subclass 491 to the graduates. So depending upon your personal preference, you can select either Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia or any other state. All the states are having equal opportunity for the graduates. For hospitality management professionals. That may or may not have a cookery specialization. Is there a PR pathway for international students? Yes, so if you have a hospitality background, still there is a pathway available. Uh, you can uh, if you have a work experience, uh, as I mentioned that you can gain if you have a work experience in a cookery, for example, cook or chef, you can gain uh, RPL qualification and also be eligible to apply for subclass 482. Um, can cooks uh, can can cooks can apply for 186 visa with having three years of Western uh, three years of Australian experience? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, for 186 visa uh, under their occupation list, the cook is not available. So only chef can apply 186 visa for uh, for 186 visa direct stream. I live in Adelaide more than seven years. I have work experience one year as a restaurant manager. I got a skill assessment. How many chances of 190 on 70 points? How many chances for one 491 as well? Uh, Emma, you have a very good chances as you have been living for last seven years, which shows your commitment towards uh, Western Australia. Sorry. You say Western Australia, or South Australia. Oh, sorry, Adelaide. Adelaide. Okay, so South Australia. So again, like you have a very good commitment towards South Australia. You're working in your nominated occupation. Very good chances. Uh, once the financial year, like the program is open, once they release the criteria, I am sure that you will be eligible to get the nomination for subclass 190 or 491, depending upon your working location. How they are checking offshore working experience? Obviously, the assessment authority conduct different different checking. Uh, by calling to their applicants and uh, uh, majority of the time they give a call to their employer to confirm their employments. OK, my skill assessment as a chef from TRA will expire in October and I haven't received any invitation. Can I extend? Uh, unfortunately, the skill assessment through job ready program cannot be extended, so you have to apply for the new skill assessment from TRA. I live in Victoria. I have one year of experience finish job ready. If I want to apply 190 from Western Australia, what documents required? OK, so the document checklist will be available on their website. Uh, once you receive uh, it's available on their website, but also the minimum requirement that you must provide the evidence that you have received a job offer letter from Western Australia based uh, employer. That is the most important documents. And apart from that, uh, financial uh, capacity documentations, your personal documentation, all the evidences of your claim in the expression of interest, those documents you will require to provide to the government. Uh, I have completed job ready and I got 80 points at the moment. Can I apply 190 in Victoria? I am in Victoria. OK, so I would say wait for the further announcement from the Victorian state government about including the chef and cook occupation. Uh, most probably, Probably there will be a, a new occupation list will be released and it will include all of this occupation. But if you want to apply before that, obviously uh, South Australia and West uh, New South Wales will open their program most probably within this week or next week of time. Last question Ahmed is asking any idea when South Australia occupation list released? 
uh, as they haven't mentioned anything, but we are expecting whether it will be available in this week or next week. Any news about NT offshore applicants? Uh, all the state nomination program are closed at the moment, so I would advise all the applicants to wait uh, for next two or three weeks. Keep an eye on different state nomination program or also they can follow us on our Facebook page where we will be publish all the requirement, all the updates, migration updates when the program gets open, when the program gets closed. So it will be available uh, for all the applicants. So make sure you follow our Facebook page. I have post graduate from QLD and interested to study commercial cookery. Which state would be best for me? Uh, I would suggest if you are from Queensland, continue working and studying in Queensland. You will be having an additional pathway, as I mentioned, to apply for a, a 491 through SBO category. When week will open? Again, same answer. There will be a further announcement. Uh, we are waiting for the government. That's it. So I think we have a uh, lot of uh, interaction with the students and a lot of question. <laughs> but I as I mentioned that, uh, you know, like at the, at the moment, most of the state has closed the program. So the criteria, the occupation list we discussed that was based on the previous uh, year's uh, information, what was the available and most of the time the criteria doesn't change significantly. If there is a changes, there will be a minor changes. Uh, maybe in their occupation list, they have added some more experience requirement or if the point uh, requirement can be changed. But apart from that, the basic criteria, either you are a graduate of that particular state or you're working in that state, that is not going to be changed uh, dramatically, but uh, there will be a minor changes upcoming we are expecting. And also the good thing is that uh, this morning I have a I, I, I heard that like I read a news that the government is also increasing. They are in plan to increase the further quota for surplus 189 visa as well, which is obviously giving more opportunity to the applicants to apply for surplus 189 as well as surplus 491 through family stream. One question from Michelle. She's asking in Victoria, regional does the requirement of living three months and job offer of one year. For 491 eligibility has been removed this financial year? No, it was there. It's the same requirement. Dipin, could you please drop your email address and contact number so that they can? Yeah, sure. Uh, <clears throat> I will definitely leave my email address in the chat box uh, and also my contact number. So if you have any question, guys, you can always draw, send me an email and if you want to book an appointment with me or any of our migration agent, uh, depending upon your location, if you are in Victoria, Melbourne, uh, South Australia, anywhere we have a branches across all the major states. So you can contact your nearest Aussies group office for more information. So any more question, guys? Or should we wrap up this session? I think we are well above the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Almost half an hour extra. So I think there is no more question, uh, Navneet. Uh, we can wrap up this session. I hope you guys have got more information about uh, studying in Australia and how can you achieve a permanent residency pathway through this. OK, I got one more question. Let's take the last one. Yeah. I think she's still typing. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Uh, OK, once for now, can we change the state now again? Uh, I would say it's a gray area. Uh, most of the state ask you to sign a commitment later when they nominating you for subclass either 190 or 491 visa that you will maintain your residency in that state. However, Department of Home Affairs, they do not uh, do this thing. They do not uh, uh, ask you to live in that particular state. As per the department policy, you can live anywhere in any state of Australia, uh, if you are applying for 491 or 190, but you should maintain the residency as per the visa subclasses. We have two more questions. In order to make my skill assessment to 186 as a chef, can I choose TRA or and vet assess? Is any uh, So TRA directly do not conduct that skill assessment for a chef, but uh, vet assess will be the authority. And there is another authority called William Anglis and uh, 
uh, other institute depending upon the location. I mean, Western Australia, they got another college as well. So they also are approved RTO who can conduct a skill assessment based uh, behalf of TRA. So, uh, but if you are uh, applying for the chef, I would say wet assess would be a good option. One more question. How do you get your PR? <laughs> Uh, mine, I got mine through Skill Independent Visa, subclass 189. I hope everybody <laughs> is clear now. So it is. Can we wait or should we wrap up? Uh, I think we should wrap up for this session. I think there is another session going on for the automotive occupations as well. So guys, as we mentioned, any question, drop an email to us or contact your nearest office office. We are more than happy to assist you. Yeah, so I hope this session is quite informative and you people have enjoyed our session. Thank you so much from both of us. And yeah, have a good evening. Thank you very much for attending the session. <laughs>